Hey guys, Paul Inventor3 here. Uh, we're going to try to check the uh, incoming frequency on my antenna uh, on an oscilloscope. Uh, this is actually my first oscilloscope I've ever had. I found it on the side of a road. Funny story because I was just, uh, I don't even know if I started learning electronics at this point. And I, I didn't even know what it was. And it was, it was just sitting there on the side of the curb for anybody to take. And I'm like, oh, I got to have it. It looks so cool. I don't know what it is, but I got to have it. Yeah, anyhow, but uh, <clears throat> it's complicated to learn. This one's a nice one. It's got two channels, two frequencies you could do at once. Uh, here's another one down here. Uh, I think that one cost me like 15 bucks. I got that from like a, a second hand store. Uh, I got another one at my shop too that uh, my dad got me at a, a estate sale. They didn't even know what it was or whether or not it worked so they sold it for five dollars. It's a real cheap old one too. But that's two, one in my shop and I got one in my lab I'm gonna show you in a second. And let me show you that right now. Okay, here's uh, the free energy circuit, ground wire, and the antenna coming in. You've seen it in all my videos. Here's the other scope, though. I'm going to try to use this one, a Heath kit, an old Heath kit. This one I got on eBay for 50 bucks. Most simplest type. I figure if I'm going to start with something, start with this. Well, I mean, I had the other ones first, but <coughs> the thing is, I know very little about how to operate these dang scopes. They're quite confusing to me. I mean, I know electronics, but there's so many ways to hook these up and everything. And I actually got the, the book for it, too. But this is how to assemble it and some very simple operation stuff, uh, testing it. Right now I have it set up. Uh, it's uh, one volt, I guess, peak to peak, and uh, it's supposed to be using the 60 hertz from the line coming in. So, I got it all adjusted according to the instructions. But anyhow, yeah, I'll have to take some special classes or watch a bunch of videos online or something to get the hang of these things. Um, so, it works. It's good. Let's see, I'm going to... Uh, let me connect this up. Let me take my circuit off of there and just get the antenna in the ground. And then we'll be back in two seconds here. Alright, uh, I just got the red connected to my antenna. And the red black, uh, black one connected to the ground. Uh, let's see. Now I'm taking an educated guess here. I got the red and vertical black and horizontal or should it be here and here I don't know what's the difference I have this set on external and let's see we got a big vertical line so um, I don't know alright so let's adjust our vertical gain that's not working um, uh, attenuation Uh, let's see, horizontal. Um, no, not vertical, horizontal position, external. Um, all right, all I'm seeing is a line. Um, my frequency veneer. No, that's not doing anything. Um, vertical gain. No, that just makes the line wider. Alright, what the heck? Um Yeah. <laughs> well alright, now I feel really stupid. Do I have to change the frequency? No, we're checking an external Signal. Um, does it matter if we put 
black one over there, red one over here. Um, one thing I've always had problems with, you know, I'm all self-taught. Adam. One antenna, one ground. Where do I need to position everything? What am I doing wrong? Alright, I got my multimeter connected to the antenna and ground right now. It's, uh, this is, got a frequency checking on there. That is kilohertz, fluctuates. Okay, so now that we know that it's around 200 kilohertz, uh, sweep selector. Well, that's the highest it goes. I'm now I'm taking it off of external. I guess maybe I was incorrect in putting it there. I've got it on 200 kilohertz, which is the highest it goes here. So I don't know if we're going to be able to get a clean uh, scope reading, especially because the frequency is uh, fluctuating. Almost, almost. It's like lines inside of lines. Strange there. Let's get a better look at that. like waves inside of waves. Hmm. So that's probably not the best scope. Maybe I should try to use one of my other ones. Hmm. Yeah, that's odd looking. Yeah, I was trying to build some coils here and try to get things resonating. So, there's one end of my antenna. Yeah, it snowed a little bit. And there's my antenna hanging down on the ground. Oh built up all the ice on it must have been just the right temperature conditions it got too heavy and if we look there's my pole 
busted. Uh, it got too cold and fragile and brittle. Couldn't take the weight. Oh my god. Yeah, so well, that really sucks. <laughs> what else is going on? Oh. It's probably my seventh attempt at putting uh, mercury, having it amalgamate, uh, whatever that word is. <laughs> amalgamatize. Get the two metals to react to each other. That's probably my uh, seventh attempt. No good yet. Uh, why was I doing that? You know, one day I was sitting there thinking about how I could, like, maybe culturally grow microscopic points on some metal or something. And then I saw the video of the uh, mercury on aluminum plate. And I thought, hmm, maybe that would make a good collector. But then after more thought about it, uh, I said, well, it's poisonous. You don't want to touch it. It crumbles apart. How you going to attach wires to it? You have to put it in a jar or something. Eh. So anyhow, but... <laughs> so I don't know. I just wanted to try it, basically. That's it. So I just... Uh, now it's kind of pissing me off. Uh, yeah, I'll get it to work one of these times. I'm going to have to think of some more projects to work on now for the winter. Yeah, well, that really sucks. So guys, uh, we're not giving up on this project, but this is definitely going to delay us for a while. And uh... Well, good news guys. Found another pole exactly like the one I had. Alright guys, so all I have to do is hope for a couple decent days. Uh, and hopefully I can get this back up there. So the one on the left over here is uh, just like my original one that broke. 16 feet. Roof rake. Suncast roof rake for shoveling the snow near the edges of your roof. And it's uh, 21 feet. I don't know if I could, uh, I'll extend it up that tall, but I might go a foot or two taller than this other one. It's actually more rigid, too. <laughs> it's only, it's 18 degrees. <laughs> It is freezing out there, man. Alright guys, we'll see if uh, I could get this all put up right now or not. I Hopefully I can. Alright, we'll see you soon. Okay. We got it, guys. Oh, where is it? There we go. The new improved pole. Oh. Getting cold out here. I'm shaking. <laughs> and if I could figure out a way to get up there, I can cut those big branches off, get this up higher even. Uh, it's my neighbor's tree. You can see it's on the, in between his house and his fence here. It's on the side of his house. It's in a bad spot. He doesn't care if I, uh, Cutting branches off it or anything would be an improvement. So that's it. All right. So, yeah, we're back in action. All right. Uh, well, that's it for right now. I'm going to probably do some experiments, go inside the lab here and make sure uh, the electrical part of it is all good and everything. But uh, I'll be talking to you guys again soon.